All right, this is just a quick video to go through Roman numeral system as it applies to writing chemical equations. And we've been dealing with polyatomics and binary compounds before. So what about these Roman numeral things? Well, if you remember, our group one here, those are the plus one charge uh, atoms. So I'll just write a plus one on top of this. Our group two is the positive two. Okay, so we know that the elements in this group are positive two. And group 13, we have a lot of plus three elements in there. Okay, carbon we're not going to worry about. And then minus three for the nitrogen group. And then a minus two for oxygen, minus one for the fluorine, and then zero for our, our noble gases down there. So there are some characteristic charges on the periodic table that some of the groups have. But really, there's so many places where we have multiple charges on atoms, and we wouldn't know which one without a Roman numeral. For instance, copper can make plus one, plus two. Uh, manganese can make a plus four, seven, plus seven, and a plus two. You know, iron can make a plus two, plus three. So since there's a variety of charges that most elements have, you know, we've gone to a, a Roman numeral system to allow us to pick the correct number. Uh, based on the formula. Let's take a look at just a couple of examples. For instance, this one here is nickel 2 phosphate. Well, nickel is Ni, and it's a member of a location where we don't know what charge it is. So the Roman numeral needs to be given because that's going to stand for the charge of the metal. So nickel 2 means Ni, and put a plus 2 on top. Now phosphate is a polyatomic. We look at our polyatomic chart, it's down here. Phosphate is PO4 minus three. So I'm gonna write PO4, and I'll put a minus three. Now remember, you could automatically put parentheses around your polyatomic, even if it's not ending up needing to be done so. Just go ahead and do it anyways, it, it's fine. So the plus two for the nickel here comes from the two that's right here. The minus three from this comes from reading the chart. Then we just crisscross our charges, we'll bring the three down here. I'll bring the two down here. So that's that's the correct formula for nickel two phosphate. Notice how the two doesn't just go down here. This Roman numeral two does not stand for the subscript. It stands for the charge of the metal. And that needs to be crisscrossed. Let's try two more examples. Lead two nitrate. Well, lead is down here in PB. We see once again, there's really no characteristic charge. And, and really, honestly, that's uh, a fine way of looking at most of the elements anyways. So lead is PB. The Roman of normal two here says take the plus two charge on that. Okay. And then we can find nitrate. Nitrate will be on our polyatomic ion chart. And it's right here. Nitrate NO3 minus one. So I write NO3. And like I've been telling you, that's a polyatomic. So just wrap that in parentheses and put a minus one outside. Now we're going to crisscross our charges. We'll put the two down here and the one would cross down here. Now remember, we don't really write ones. Now if I ever see a PB1 here, I'm not going to mark that wrong. It's fine that you put the one there, but we just don't write ones. Okay, so that's the formula. Okay, for that one right there. Now chromium six. So we go over here, we find chromium again in the middle of the table. We don't really don't know what charge is, but that six tells us to take chromium and write a plus six on top. Now this one's sulfide, so you're not going to find that on the polyatomic ion chart. That's sulfur, who changed the last name to become sulfide instead of sulfur. So that's S, and that's a minus 2. Okay, so I'll write S and a minus 2. Now we crisscross that, we'll bring the 2 down here and the 6 here. Now remember, our method is crisscross charges, check for simplification. This one, both of these are divisible by two. So then my final answer is gonna be chromium sulfur three. And that's how we handle the Roman numeral system. Very similar to everything else we've been doing, except the Roman numeral stands for the charge of the metal because the metal can have more than one charge. You won't see Roman numerals on these guys though because there's only one possible charge and it's labeled from the periodic table. So we don't use Roman numerals for every element, only those that have multiple charges or we don't know what the charge should be. Okay, so that's it for this lesson and that's our last for writing formulas.